Okay, welcome back in. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. This is the 21 off season. This is like the last day of July. We are working our way through training camp right now. We're talking about the Chiefs. Hope you're doing very well. Um, we are talking today about mainly the salary cap again for this season right now and about free agents and about what I think Kansas City should or should not be doing. Now, listen, I promise I don't wake up every morning and try to wonder how I can be the biggest bucket of cold water for Kansas City fans. But... What I do think a lot about each week is what I would do if I were trying to make decisions for Kansas City, not only to make the roster better, but to make sure we're still in good shape for future seasons as well. It's all important. There's no part of it that isn't important. And if you screw up the roster today or the finances today in 2021, it can really mess you up for 22 or 23 or even beyond. So that's what we're talking about. And, and what's really got me going today for this particular video is I have seen a plethora of articles from a lot of people writing about Kansas City and about the free agents that Kansas City should or should not be looking at at, at defensive end, at defensive back, at even some other positions that, that Kansas City may or may not could use. Here's a couple of facts. The first fact is this. Kansas City could be improved. Absolutely. There is no team in the NFL that couldn't get better as a team. Every team in the NFL has weaknesses or soft spots somewhere. Kansas City is a little soft at defensive end. They're not horrible, but they don't have the depth and the strength at defensive end that they have at defensive tackle. They're in pretty good shape at defensive back, but one injury could start to derail some of what they've got back there at defensive back. So there's no question about it. They could get better at defensive back, that's for certain. They could get deeper. But the thing that, that really I find myself doing, this is where it comes back to being responsible and intelligent and smart and looking ahead, is that they simply do not have the money to really upgrade at any of these positions. The, the finances just aren't there. Now, I spoke about that earlier in the week when I was talking about the defensive line, and I just kind of mentioned it in passing that the money wasn't really there. And although I haven't heard anybody specifically criticize me or comment on I can just kind of feel it in the air, okay, that some people are looking on spot track or they're looking at over the cap or they're listening to an article or they're listening to somebody on sports talk radio there in Kansas City all of whom do a very good job but a lot of whom are saying that Kansas City has cap space to work with right now in 2021 and the fact is that they don't we're gonna go through that here in just a second but that's that's the thing we need to remember is that they do not have the cap space to make a big move they could take on a free agent for about a million to a million and a half dollars and not hurt themselves at all because they could simply take out one of their top 51 players who's also making somewhere around a million dollars and they would be fine financially in terms of net revenue lost or gain. But anything beyond that, you're talking about a guy paying them $4 million a season or $6 million for this year or $7 million for this year or rearranging or re-signing somebody or doing an extension with somebody. The money's not there. So let's walk through it and talk about it first. Okay. Right here, $7 million. This is the amount of cap space that you're probably hearing that Kansas City has available to them. And if I weren't following Kansas City, if I were just kind of randomly dropping in and looking at it, this is what I would find. If you were going on spot track and they do a great job, or if you were going to over the cap, you would find that they've got somewhere between six and a half and $7 million to spend right now. Here's the problem with that. In 2018, Kansas City had $2 million in restructured money. Now, hang on with me. For those of you who have already followed these videos, you know where I'm going. For those of you who, who haven't followed along with me, hang on with me. We're going to get right back to here, okay, and why this number doesn't work. 2018, they restructured $2 million worth of money. That means that they borrowed restructured money. 99% of the time in the NFL is borrowed money. Where are they borrowing it from? They are borrowing it from future seasons. Not too bad an amount, $2 million in 2018 that they borrowed from where? The 2019 season. In 2019, they borrowed $5 million. Again, not horrible. It's not a horrible amount. Where did they borrow that money from? They borrowed it from the 2020 salary cap, which means when 2020 rolled around, they had $5 million less to spend than they would have had they not restructured anybody's contract. Move over to 2020, $7 million that they borrowed. Where did they borrow it from? 
from the 2021 salary cap, which means this off season, as they started working their way through the season, they had $7 million less because they borrowed it. They had $7 million less this year than they would have had. Now, Kansas City is already starting to feel the pinch, okay, of the Patrick Mahomes contract, which is big, of the Chris Jones contract, which is big, of the Frank Clark contract, which is big, of the Tyron Matthew contract, which is pretty big. They're starting to feel that pinch, and it just slowly takes away from the available money that you have. And that means you've got to be smarter with the money that you have left. And so what Kansas City is doing is what a lot of NFL teams are doing, and that is borrowing from future seasons. Now, I'm not against doing a little bit of restructuring or borrowing from future seasons if you know that you have a tight window with which to work. I, you know, I understood why New Orleans Saints were doing it. I wouldn't have done it, but I understood why the Saints were borrowing and restructuring a lot because Drew Brees had a limited amount of time to play with. By the way, it's really hot here in my studio. It's about 90 degrees. So if I start jibber-jabbering, uh, that's why, okay? But Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes is going to be playing, we hope, for 10 to 15 years. He's going to be healthy for 10 to 15 years. And so me personally, I would like to restrict the amount of borrowing that we do for future seasons as much as possible. Kansas City got caught in a little bit of a pinch this year with the COVID cap as did a lot of teams, and next year too. So I, I understood they needed a little bit of flexibility. But in general, Kansas City needs to keep that borrowing, that restructuring down as much as they can and limit that extra spending, okay? In 2021, we've already borrowed, right now, we don't have anything else, we've already borrowed $16 million from the 2022 salary cap, okay? That basically means Kansas City is already in the red by $16 million off of next year's cap. That's $16 million that Kansas City would have had to use next season that they already don't have because they've used it for this year's salary cap. Now, that's where, this is, this is important, this is the crux of it right here, that's where this $7 million in cap space, I'll put it in quotation marks, okay, the seven million dollars, the six and a half to seven million dollars that you're hearing, and it's an accurate number that you're hearing, Kansas City really does not have that money to spend if they absolutely needed it. Let's say somebody goes down at defensive end or somebody goes down at defensive back and you're like, wow, we are going to get crushed this year if we don't go ahead and sign somebody. We, we've just got to save our season. That money is there to spend, but in reality, this $7 million has already been borrowed, restructured from 2022 and really 2023 as well, okay? If they don't spend any more of this $7 million, it's going to roll over back into the 2022 cap, which would essentially take this number from 16 back down to $9 million. But Kansas City does not actually have $7 million to spend, six and a half. I, I covered this in videos two months ago, and I'm sure some people are kind of looking sideways going, wait, wait, wait a second, Ben, you said they didn't have cap space and that they wouldn't have it, and now they do. Well, technically, they've got it, but they've already borrowed this money through restructuring from the 2022 season. And if you don't spend it, if you can find a way to just be disciplined and not spend that money, this six and a half million dollars will roll back over and you'll have it to spend in 2022. Now, I understand every position can be improved, okay? You could get another defensive end and make your team better. You could get another defensive back and make your team better. But you can say that about every NFL team every single offseason. And for me personally, I do not like borrowing from future seasons. I, I absolutely hate it. I absolutely detest it. There's a number of reasons. We've covered them in videos gone by. One of the real reasons that I really hate it is that it gives you actually less flexibility. I, I know a lot of people think, hey, we're more flexible because we can do all this kind of creative stuff with the cap. All it is at the end of the day, this thinking outside the box, this creative thinking, this finding the money that people are doing, it is borrowing from future seasons. And I don't care what form you put it in. You could put it in the form of a contract extension for Tyron Matthew. 
where you make next year's numbers bigger and this year's numbers smaller. You could put it in the form of restructuring somebody else on the roster. You could put it in the form of void years or dead years like some teams are doing. No matter which way you slice it, it is borrowing from future seasons. And basically, and this is what I really like to think of it as, it's basically the same thing as having a credit card. And this is where I start to feel like a father. You know, if, if I give my kids a credit card and tell them to go out and spend money on toys, they're going to spend as much as they possibly can because they don't understand. Hey, Dad, you've got money next year, too. Yeah, I've got to pay it off next year. It's no different than taking a credit card and borrowing and buying stuff that you don't actually have the money for. I get it. I'm going to make more money next year. Next year, I'll be able to buy more toys for my kids. But that's not the smart thing to do is to pull out the old credit card and do that. The best thing to do is as I earn it, as I have the money, to go ahead and pay for a little bit of the stuff that I want to for my kids. It's no different here with the salary cap. We know that we've got more money in 2022 and 2023, but we're going to want to win in those years as well. The other thing that I don't like about it, and we'll talk about this with Frank Clark, it ties you to players more strongly and gives you less ability to get rid of them easily. And I want to take, talk, take a look at the Frank Clark contract right here. In 2022, Frank Clark is scheduled to have a cap hit of $26.3 million. It's an enormous cap hit. Even for an all-pro, it would be an enormous cap hit at defensive end. It, it's a gin ginormous part of the salary cap. Frank Clark is a good, solid player. He's nowhere near an all-pro in, in any way. When you watch the video, he's a good player. He's nothing, nothing near an all-pro. He'll be making $26.3 million next season. If Kansas City wants to get rid of him next year, and I expect them to. I expect them to release to release him next offseason. Again, I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying I expect that. Excuse me. <coughs> it's going to cost them $12.9 million in dead cap space to do that. Now, I still expect them to do that because that's a savings of, what is that, $13.5 million, I think. So I expect them to do that next offseason. This is one of the things that I have predicted that Kansas City is probably going to do. If they hadn't restructured Frank Clark in 2020, they would have had another $3.2 million coming back to them. So instead of 12.9, this 3.2 would really have become something, excuse me, give me just a second here, that would be 9.7. It would really be 9.7. Now, that $3.2 million would have gone back onto the 21 cap and the 2020 cap, so they would have spent that in these other two seasons, but they could, could have avoided this dead cap here. It just makes it a lot more difficult to let go of a player. And, and, and you see this all the time with lots of players who have the big salary cap hits because teams have restructured them multiple times. Pittsburgh is doing this ad nauseum. They're restructuring and restructuring and restructuring, and they're not winning hardly anything. They are really struggling to even make the playoffs, Pittsburgh is, and they are restructuring out the wazoo. Now, Kansas City has been much more disciplined than that. I was very proud of Kansas City this year. They, I, I wouldn't have done all the moves that they did, but I was very proud of them that instead of spending a boatload of money at defensive end, they contemplated moving Chris Jones. Now, I'm not totally in favor of moving Chris Jones over to defensive end for a large number of snaps, but I would much rather them do that then go out and spend $10 million at defensive end that they really don't have because it's really not there. They are really in the red here as far as their cap space goes. Instead of spending a lot of money at offensive line this year, they let go of Schwartz and let go of Fisher, and they could have restructured contracts even more. They could have restructured Patrick Mahomes perhaps even more. They could have restructured Frank Clark. They didn't do that, okay? They, they exercised some discipline, so they're doing better than a lot of teams are doing what you can see here, in 2023, they're already up to $14 million. We're two off-seasons away from the 23 off-season. They've already borrowed $14 million from 2023. And that might not sound like much when you're talking about salary caps of $200 million or $230 million, whatever it turns out to be that season. But when you really start counting it down, you start looking at how much money each player gets, and you're like, wow, we could really use another defensive end, or we could use another defensive back. This $14 million really jumps out, and it could really go a long ways. And so 
for those reasons, I would love to see them not spend any more of this $7 million than they absolutely have to. Unless somebody gets injured and it's going to just, you know, totally ruin your season, they just need to get out there and go with what they have. If they want to bring somebody in, we've got some free agents at defensive end that I think they can get for $1 million or maybe $1.5 million. I'm okay with that. They're not great free agents. They're not exciting free agents. But there are some guys out there, you know, a handful of guys that they could bring in that would add a little bit more depth back to defensive end, and it would cost them maybe $500,000 net by the time they released one player who's making a million dollars and they signed another guy for a million and a half dollars. So that would be much better than spending anything like six, seven million dollars for, um, for the kind of players that they're talking about in free agency and some of these articles and some of the websites and, and some of the talk radio that I'm hearing. Okay, so $14 million they've already borrowed from 2023. $6 million they've already borrowed from 2024. You don't get that money back. It's already gone. It's already been spent. Where's it been spent on? It's already been spent on 2021 and 2020, making those rosters better. And not every NFL team is doing this. And in fact, teams who restructure a lot, this is important. I'll close with this. Teams who restructure a lot are actually more likely to miss the playoffs completely than they are to get to the AFC or NFC title game. Forget winning the Super Bowl for a second. Statistically, you can go back and look at this, and it bears out over the past 10 to 15 years, a team that has restructured a lot of money to keep a handful of players, say 8 to 10 players, and those players are making a boatload of money now. Teams that do that are actually more likely to just miss the playoffs entirely than they are to make it back to the AFC or NFC title game. Now, Kansas City's got a good team this year. They're the Super Bowl favorite or one of the two Super Bowl favorites. They are absolutely going to crush it this year. They're going to have another awesome season, but they're not perfect. And those problems at defensive end, those problems at defensive back, that's some of the byproduct of the large contracts that they have with Frank Clark, Tyron Matthew, Chris Jones, Patrick Mahomes. But you only make it worse when you start borrowing from these future seasons. Okay, that's enough for today's video. We can talk about that more in the future. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.